Thank you for clicking on the video for part two of the women that saved David's life during Absalom's reign. In the last video, we discussed how Joab used a wise woman from Te excuse me, Tekoka. Also, there was a female servant from Inrigal that helped David spy. That's plural, spies. And a man's wife from Barhirium that diverted Absalom's men from David's spies. Now we'll pick up from where David arises. Once Ahithophel found that his advice wasn't followed, he took his own life, 2 Samuel 17, 25. Absalom had appointed Amazah over the army in place of Joab. Amazah was a son of Jether, an Ishmaelite, who had married Abigail the daughter of Nahash and sister of Zeruah, the mother of Joab. The Israelites and Ab Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. Some of the people that honored David brought a bounty of food for him and the people that were hiding out with him. David numbered and set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. David sent out his troops, a third under the command of Joab, a third of, under the command of Abishai, Joab's brother, a third under Hittai, the Gittite. King David said that he will also march with them, but the people begged him not to go, but to stay back and protect those who are not going into battle. Even though David's men were going into battle with Absalom, David asked for his commanders, commanders to be gentle with his son. During the battle, Absalom rode up on a mule and his hair got caught in a tree branch and the mule continued on. A man told Joab that he saw Absalom hanging from a tree. Joab asked the man, why didn't you kill him? I would have paid you. The man reminded Joab that King David said to all commanders to be gentle with Absalom. Joab said that he wouldn't wait. Joab killed Absalom by thrusting three darts in his heart. Picking up in 2 Samuel 18, 15. Joab gave instructions to Cushai to tell King David the kingdom is safe. However, Ahimazah asked if he could deliver the news to King David. Let me run and take the news to King David the Lord has vindicated him by delivering him from the hands of his enemy. After much persuasion, Joab allowed Ahimazah to go and give the news. Ahimazah outran Cushai and told King David that there was a lot of ruckus, but couldn't really see what was happening. Cushai had to let King David know that his kingdom had been avenged and that unfortunately Absalom is dead. Then King David mourned over his son, Absalom. Now picking up in 2 Samuel 19. 2 Samuel 19, verse 5. Then Joab went to the house to the king and said, Today you have humiliated all your men who have just saved your life and the lives of your sons and daughters and the lives of your wives and concubines. You love those who hate you and you hate those who love you. You have made it clear today that the commanders and their men mean nothing to you. I see that you would be pleased if Absalom were alive today and all of us were dead. Now go out and encourage your men. I swear by the Lord that if you don't go out, not a man will be left with you by nightfall. This will be worse for you than all the calamities that have come on you from your youth till now. So King David got up took his seat in the gateway. When the men were told that king is sitting in the gateway, they all came before him and David reunites his kingdom. Meanwhile, the Israelites had fled to their own homes. 2 Samuel 20, Sheba, son of Bichri, went up against David and had all the Israelites follow under Sheba. Amasa, was summoned to go after Sheba, but took too long to get the job done. 2 Samuel 20, verse 7. 
David told Abishai to go after Sheba. Joab took his men under the direction of Abishai and went after Sheba, son of Berkai. During their march, they ran into Amasa, who went to hug Joab. This is when Joab stabbed Amasa and killed him. After that, Joab and his brother Abishai pursued Sheba, and the men followed suit. Sheba passed all the tribes of Israel to Abel Beth Mahak, and through the entire region of the Berkrites, who gathered together and followed him. All the troops with Joab came and besieged Sheba in Abel Beth Mahaka. They built a siege ramp up to the city and it stood against the outer fortifications. While they were battering the wall to bring it down, a wise woman called to the city, listen, listen, tell Joab to come here so I can speak with him. He went toward her and she asked, are you Joab? I am, he answered. She said, listen to what your servant has to say. I'm listening, he said. She continued, long ago they used to say, get your answer at Abel, and that settled it. We are peaceful and faithful in Israel. You're trying to destroy a city that is mother to Israel. Why do you want to swallow up the Lord's inheritance? Far be it from me, Joab replied. Far be it from me to swallow up or destroy. That is not the case. A man named Sheba, son of Bichri, from the hill country of Ephraim, has lifted up his hand against the king, against David. Hand over this one man, and I will withdraw from the city. The woman said to Joab, his head will be thrown to you from the wall. Then the woman went to all the people with her wise advice, and they cut off the head of Sheba, son of Bichri, and they threw it to Joab. So he sounded the trumpet, and his men dispersed from the city, each returning to his home. And Joab went back to the king in Jerusalem. In the story of King David and Absalom, there were several women that are mentioned in their family dysfunction. Tamar, David's daughter, a wise woman used by Joab, a wench, which is a female servant from a nearby town of Enrogal, a man's wife from Bahirim, and a wise woman from Abel Beth Mehaka. As you see, the townsmen listened to the wise woman, which in turn avenged King David's honor. Biblical women have a voice. Thank you for watching. Please check out the other content on this channel and kindly like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. And I pray that you have a blessed day. Thank you.